Hi, as Brent at PDS, uh, we're here at the home of one of our good friends. They just purchased a brand new home uh, and the builder told them that there was a passive radon system in the house. So we're going to go down and inspect it uh, and see what needs to be done to activate the system. Uh, since their short-term test results came back at 13.9 picocuries per liter, uh, which is four times or, almost, or nearly four times the EPA recommended action level of four picocuries per liter. So uh, quite dangerous radon levels in this home. We're going to get all fixed up because I got a newborn baby uh, and have them on their way. So let's go down, check it out, and see what the builder did. Yay. All right. So our friends have been here for a little over a month now. Um, they've already started moving into this crawl space before activating the system. Ideally, when uh, if you're going to use the crawl space as a storage, try to lay down old carpet samples or something underneath the vapor barrier and the radon barrier uh, so that it's going to decrease the puncture uh, risk, basically. But we found the extraction point. Um, it's a pretty large crawl space. We're looking at close to 700 square feet, according to the homeowner. Um, we were, we've been looking around. We're not exactly certain what vapor barrier this is, um, but we're, we're starting to notice some things about the system. So it's three inch schedule 40 PVC pipe. So good news is it's schedule 40. That's ideal. Um, that's actually required. Uh, four inch would be ideal. However, three inch, we could tell that they've run it up through the house in some chases uh, in order to hide it. Uh, the good news is we've already looked upstairs and, uh, there is an outlet within six feet of the pipe. So that's, that's excellent news. We'll be able to install a regular voltage fan. Now we don't know what the this barrier is made of. It looks to be a six mil barrier. It doesn't look like anything that we stock and sell. So I don't think it's a radon specific barrier. I think it's more of a vapor barrier, um, but it looks like it's gonna work. Now uh, we've noticed a lot of the seams are taped, uh, but we're not sure the permeability of the tape as well. So this is gonna be uh, some trial and error, some testing once we activate the system. Once we activate the system and turn on the radon fan, we'll have to notice that this, this uh, fabric will get sucked down and that'll make sure that we know what we're working with. All right, so here we are um, at the sump system. Uh, pretty much as we found it, unfortunately this is pretty common uh, with large home builders in the U.S. without radon experience. Um, actually when I found the sump system it wasn't even plugged in yet, so we went ahead and plugged it in. Uh, if you zoom in on the sump lid here, you can tell uh, that it's not totally airtight. There's, I can fit my fingers in here. Uh, there's quite a bit of airflow. So if we were to activate this system without doing anything to this sump lid, uh, we're going to short circuit our system mere feet away from the extraction point. Um, this is where we're going to pull air. We're going to pull air that's conditioned air from the home, because um, even though we're technically not inside the living space of the home, there's no insulation here on this subfloor. So this is technically inside of the home. This is air that, uh, that the homeowners would be breathing. So we need to make sure that this all gets sealed. We brought a series of grommets to do so of different sizes. I just wanted to be sure that I had the right things, but we've got um, one and a half inch pipe grommet. And then we've also got a cord grommet here as well. So we're gonna have to do some cutting here, seal it with caulk. We've got, it's taped up the side. And again, I don't know the permeability of this tape. You can see here there's it's pretty easy to peel away, so we might have to do some extra caulking or taping in this section. Now, up the walls, typically with the radon barrier, what you'll be doing if you've watched some of the other videos on our website, is we'll, we're hoping that this barrier is caulked at least a foot up the wall with a, with a caulk bead all the way around. It's really hard to know if that was done properly. Again, we're going to have to activate the system uh, and see uh, what kind of suction we're getting. We'll check the YouTube manometer. We'll uh, check the short-term test results after the system's been activated to see if it's actually doing its job. And if not, we're gonna have to do some more sealing because with active soil depressurization, you wanna make sure you're moving soil air. You're moving sub, sub home air, sub slab air. In this case, there's no slab, but, but sub soil gases out of the home. If we're just moving conditioned air, we may eliminate the radon problem because we may move a lot of air out of the home, but it's not gonna be energy efficient whatsoever. Their heating bill, the air conditioning bills are going to spike because we're going to be pulling more conditioned air from the house rather than radioactive gas. Hi. So while well, Brent's been working on the sump, um, I have been working on sealing all the seams. So I went around the pipes, uh, made sure that they were sealed. Um, previously, they were just kind of taped kind of low, didn't have a real good seal around the pipe with the plastic. So. I went around the best I could with the tape, went up the pipe a little bit, and up that copper pipe as well, sealed the seam, and the seam that went up back behind this 
insulation here. I gotta come back and get up a little bit higher in there. Um, just to make sure that we have a good seal so that when we activate the system, there isn't any leaks happening. All right, at professional discount supply, we want things to look professional. So radon and Sharpie is pretty good, but we're just gonna properly label the system uh, at three points within the system so that nobody could mistake it for plumbing. All right, just uh, coming closer, I want to show you the wiring here on this RN2 fan. So um, currently all Fantec fans have what's called a terminal block. Um, there's a wiring diagram on the inside of every fan lid. Um, so basically as a consumer, all you're going to be connecting are these black and white wires. Um, there's an outlet already upstairs in the attic space, which is great because this is rated as a small appliance. So we can use a six foot power cord. We don't have to pull electrical permits. Uh, but basically what we did here is we connected these black and white wires and then the green, it's a floating ground. This is a strain relief, so if I tug on this, um, it's not going to damage the internal wiring. You want to hand tighten the strain relief fitting uh, because if you tighten it too much, um, you can damage um, some of the current flows. Uh, it's pretty rare, but you just don't need to crank this down as hard as you think. Uh, and then this fits perfectly inside here. I get it. Oops, tightened it too much. There we go. And tighten that strain relief. Strain lid goes on top. Two screws, and you're good to go. So let's go plug her in. All right. So this is the Fantech RN2 fan. Um, what we're doing right now is we've already put on the cord with the strain relief. Uh, we've connected the internal wiring. Uh, there's a wiring diagram on the inside of the lid. It's just two wires and a floating ground. Um, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to measure how much pipe we have to remove from the attic. So we can get it an approximate measurement. So from coupling to coupling, we're looking at approximately 15 inches of pipe, maybe 14 and a half. Um, this is a four inch duct opening and then we're going down to three inch pipe. Uh, we're using Fantex radon specific LDVI. They're uh, noise reducing couplers. They stand for low durometer vibration isolating, uh, which is just a fancy word for squishy. They're a lot squishier than fern coats. Uh, so what they do is the fan is free floating. It's not going to be bracketed to the house anywhere. So the only thing holding the fan up is the pipe and any vibration which is the most common noise that upsets the occupants of the house, uh, should be absorbed in these couplings and not make it to the pipe and not make it to the stud walls and then turn bother people when they're trying to go to sleep. So that's why we got these good couplings on there. So let's go cut some pipe. <clears throat> All right, folks. So we've removed the raw from the pipe. We got a spot for our fan. Um, there's an outlet pre-installed uh, which helps tremendously so we can use a 120 volt fan. The only thing uh, that I noticed that we're gonna have to remedy is the pipe um, isn't really secured to anything so we'll probably want to take some plumbing strap and secure it uh, to a 2x4 up there uh, just to make sure the weight of the pipe is not that much. Uh, the fan isn't really going to support it, but um, I'd like that if it was secured. I'm probably also going to file this down and have a cleaner cut. I just did this with a hacksaw by hand. Um, something you probably notice is there is a bit of condensation in the pipe. Do not worry about that. Um, it's a rainy day right now, and there's no radon fan running. But once the radon fan's running, all that condensation uh, is just going to be completely wiped out. You know, rain cannot compete with 100 CFM coming up at it. So let's get this fan on. All right, again, we've got the Fantex RN2 fan. I've secured the LDVI coupling below. There's an inner lip uh, that I could feel it uh, snug up against. Then I hand tighten this really, really well. This has already been hand tightened. Now right here, the lip on the inside of the coupling is right about there. So I think I'm gonna try and get rid of this little piece. And then I could probably, since these are so flexible, I should just be able to move, maneuver the pipe in there uh, without uh, having to do anything major. So um, should just be another minute or two. 
this is awesome. I just had to show this off. Um, I had the pipe fully off and these couplings are so flexible that I can just push them up the pipe, maneuver the pipe how I want, and pull them down as long as the strapping is there. They're just really malleable. I do need two hands. I'm holding the phone with one, but it's pretty incredible how easy it is to move these couplings around. All right, so we're installing the U-tube. Um, you want to make sure that the U-tube is completely vertically leveled. Um, you put a, a 3 16 inch hole uh, about two inches above the U-tube. Again, this is on the suction side of the fan, so from the fan and below. Uh, this happened to be the best place to put it in the home, but you could have also maybe placed it in the crawl space, or if there was a mechanical room, um, you could place it there as well. And we'll see here, we'll remove this side and make sure that the manometer is at the right spot and it's sitting at zero. Now, a lot of homeowners call and think this means zero radon and it could not be further from the truth. Zero is bad. Zero is your fan is not on, on currently. It is off. It's not even plugged in. Can't hear anything. Um, when this fan starts to move, uh, the suction from the system will be shown in this manometer and the manometer will move somewhere between zero and about 2.1 is what this fan's capable of producing. So this is measuring inches of water column pressure. Um, basically, there's no bad reading except for zero. Um, if the level changes significantly, it may be a sign that you need to test your radon system. Uh, it could be a sign, let's say that it levels out at 0.5. <clears throat> and one day, uh, the homeowner comes to check this and it's at 0.25. This being a crawl space system with storage, that could mean that dad ripped the crawl space barrier and now it's just pulling a lot more air because there's less pressure, there's less resistance, so it's getting air easier from somewhere. Uh, let's say it was installed at 0.5 and one day the homeowner comes in and checks it and it's all the way up at 2. What could that mean? That could mean a number of things. It could mean that something is trapped in the pipe, perhaps on the exhaust side that's blocking it, uh, typically an animal, maybe it built a nest in there. Or it could have had a series of three or four days worth of really heavy, heavy rain and the water table rose. And now this fan is working harder. It's sucking harder. So it's higher on the YouTube. Um, a higher YouTube reading means less airflow, means you're exhausting less radioactive gas. Always a good time to test. Um, but so long as you're keeping up with your EPA um, uh, suggested two uh, biannual tests, uh, then you'll be in good shape. No more radon Yay. in the house. This is who we're doing it for. Radon free. Little Emery. <laughs> Yay. <laughs>